So that's it for like the meat and potatoes of the spreadsheet. Like that's the most important part. I'm going to really quick show you the rest of it just so you can get an idea of what you're looking at if you do go and view it online later. If we scroll up from this section we were looking at before, and I'm just going to page up to the top, you can see this is the raw data. You can see I took readings every 200 minutes. I did that kind of arbitrarily because the test happened to last just about 2,000 minutes long, and it just seemed a good way to break it down into 10 readings. And all I did was watch the time-lapse video, pause it at every 200-minute interval, and look at the readings on all the voltmeters and copy them down here. Nothing terribly earth-shattering about that. And so you can see, for example, the Fuji batteries had a 3-volt time. In other words, they lasted until they hit 3 volts of 2,060 of minutes, which is the highest here, which is why they come off with the highest capacity. And again, you can see the Energizer Max here in bright red because that is the worst by far. Now here I just divide the number of minutes by 60 to get the number of hours. And that's helpful for calculating amp hours. And I also went to the trouble of making a nice pretty graph showing each of the batteries. It's very hard to determine which is which because like these colors end up being very similar because there's 15 of them and you can only cram, only cram so many colors into one graph. But it looks pretty cool and you can kind of see the discharge curves there. Um, this blue line here, that is, if I recall, the Duracell Optimums. Those stayed at a higher voltage longer than the rest. Again, I mean, if you're a home user, I still stand by my advice that the all max batteries are going to be best bet. But if you had some application where you needed a battery to hold a higher voltage for longer under a certain load, then the Duracell Optimums at the most expensive might still be your best option. But you can see that they still end up performing in a mediocre fashion because they tail off very quickly when they get down to a lower voltage. But again, they might have their uses. And here is a table of the amount of current being drawn at any of these given time samples. Again, same time increments. It just takes the data above and basically multiplies them by the line slope of the current draw of the light bulbs. So in order to see how much current each bulb is drawing, these are the LED bulbs, in addition to the voltmeter at any given input voltage. Here's the input voltage that the batteries are providing, and here would be the current draw of the LED quote-unquote bulb, because it's not really a bulb, but whatever. And then we also have the mini voltmeter and how much current it's drawing at each of those voltages. And then I add them up and plot them on this chart. And you can see it's, very, it's a very linear curve which is great because that means the uh, current is going down in step with the voltage, which makes other calculations very easy. So basically using that line slope from that graph or from that set of data, you can determine the amount of current being drawn at any given voltage. So this just takes the voltage from the above chart and does some mathematical wiz wizardry to come up with the amount of current being drawn. And this is the average amount of current being drawn over the course of the test for each of these batteries. And from that, because we know the duration of the test, this can give us the amp hours for each battery. Now the calculations I grant may not be perfect. There is a margin of error here. I just don't think it's a significant margin of error. And relative to each other, the numbers are perfectly sensible. So while you could test it and get a slightly different value than 1.485 amp hours for the Fuji EnviroMax batteries, they should still be in relation, in the same relation to these other batteries. So you'd probably still find the runner-up being all max. Even if you get a slightly different exact number to this, the relationship should be the same. And I stand by that. And here's just uh, me noting the slope and offset of that current curve. Well, current line. And that brings us back down to pricing. Now one little bonus here is sheet number one, which I left titled sheet number one because it's basically useless it is the higher current test with the incandescent bulb. Now, the annoying part is that this is done in a slightly different order, and I didn't take voltages at each different increment of time. The second test was much better than this first one, but here are basically the conclusions. I did the time it took to get to 3 volts, as well as the time for the bulb to go out. 
In this case, the time for the bulb to go out is a little more useful than with the LED bulbs because there's still a decent amount of voltage left by the time that bulb goes out and they, the batteries can't overcome the resistance of that higher amperage bulb. But again, the interesting thing is that the Olmax batteries still, even under this test, ended up being the best price per amp hour. And here we have, again, the Fujis being the second best price per amp hour on average in small quantities. The only, the uh, Amazon Basics, as before, are second best when buying in bulk. So across the board, the results were the same as far as each battery in relation to the others. So I'm fairly confident, again, that my testing was correct, again, to give a relative comparison of all these batteries. And I also throw that in there that, you know, my testing may differ than your testing, uh, just so also I don't get sued by a battery company who says, oh, well, you did that testing completely wrong. You should have done this, this, and this, and then our batteries were to perform the best. Maybe so, but uh, this seemed like a fairly real-world test in as if you had a flashlight running for a certain amount of time and you wanted to see how long the flashlight would last and how much it cost you to run the flashlight. This would be a good example of that. Now, I was just kind of wandering around this uh, chart right here, but this is the same as the pricing chart from the other page. This is a copy-paste job. I happened to do it for this test first and then copy and pasted it into the second spreadsheet that just says battery voltages. So this uh, area here is the same as this area here. It's just on this one, I don't have those nice headers that say bulk, uh, not bulk, and whatever the hell else it said. So anyway, I may clean this sheet up a little bit. Um, I won't change the values because I'm not going to run these tests again. So everything you see here will be value-wise the same. The spreadsheet just kind of looks a little messy, so I might make it just, just nicer to look at. I don't know.